Oh, this this better be so a really good interview because, you know, the pressure <laughs> is high. Hi, I'm your host, Mick Spikey, here on Canvases and Queens. Two artists exploring one theme relating to drag and art. Rick Draws Things is here, and today on the show, we'll dive deep into the subject of paper cutting. So find out more after this, grab your brushes, because it's time to spill some tin. And once again, it's me, Mick Spikey, here on Canvases and Queens. Grab on to your clocks because it's artist Rick Draws Things. Hi. Hello. How Hi. are you? Wait, more excitement. Hi. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> I was I was very low <laughs> low energy for a second. Uh, how are you? I'm good. I'm very honored that you decide to spend your Saturday morning with me. Uh, so this, this is better be uh, a really good interview because you know the pressure <laughs> is high. Yeah, if I have to get you up on a Saturday morning, it better be worth it. Yes. Anyway, uh, maybe we should get into it. Are you ready, Rick? Yes. So we'll start the show in Act One, and this is the part of the show where we take a closer look at some of your work. And I thought maybe it's a good place to start with your very first drag race art. I think it's the Elisa Edwards face. Is that correct? Yes. I did that in 2016, I want to say. I finally started watching Drag Race around then. And I just loved her like mirror face. So that was a very bad way. No, I can't do it. Just her giving like black swan with the, with the half done makeup and just the Elisa of it all. <laughs> Um, yeah. So those of us at home who might be only listening in, I want to describe it as like a vector-like art of Alyssa Edwards' face, only the face, doing the tongue pop. Um, where she just really is living her best life, looking in the mirror. And I was not good enough at drawing faces back then, so I just kind of only drew the eyes, the mouth, and the nostrils. And I was like, that's enough. And then like kind of a gross <laughs> gray background. Um but I guess it worked out because that of all my illustrations has gone like all over the internet, basically. Like I keep seeing that on like free vector websites. There were flyers here in Holland for a drag makeup class and um, they use that one. But then I find out like, you know, it's just for free on like every vector website you can find. So it's not their fault. You're angry and flattered at the same time. It's a sp specific emotion you have when you do um, illustrations online. And then I think the best part is that on Reddit, uh, if you go to the Drag Race Reddit, that's one of the uh, custom emojis. Um, nobody there oh. asked me, can we do this? But it just became a thing. Like, it's just a, a drag thing online, which I kind of love. Like, it's my own little worldwide oh, clip no. art that people would recognize without knowing who, it, who did it. Yeah, I feel happy and sad for you at the same time. That's kind of fun, though. Like, it's <laughs> it's just fun to see somebody post something shocking on Reddit and then add that little emoji. I'm like, oh, that's something silly I drew in, like, 2016. Looking at it now, it's so funny to see, like, it does not look good. Like, so much of this, I would do so much better now. And maybe I'll do that someday. Just, like, do my own little remake of this. Okay, Redditors, watch out. There will be a new one coming out soon. <laughs> yes, steal the new one, please. <laughs> <laughs> still, still the new one and, and credit the artist this time <laughs> I'm good and uh, this piece still lives on so let's let's hope it gets a new life with a new piece but no pressure I might do that yeah that's just fun <laughs> okay so um, out of all the artwork that you show me is there one that it's your own personal favourite I think the one I sent in as my favourite is um, a Hustlers illustration from the movie Hustlers so um if I'm describing correctly, it's inspired by the Klim. Uh, the Kiss. The Kiss, yes. Yeah, I watched yeah. Hustlers, um, I think, on my birthday when it came out in, I'm guessing, 2019. And loved it. And I was talking about it with a friend who had just seen it. And he was like, oh, you have to draw that moment where Jennifer Lopez takes Constance Wu and just wraps her in her giant fur coat on the roof. And I was like, that's a very good idea but I do not know how to draw fur, or I do, but I don't have the time, basically. And then I figured out, like, how could I stylize it? And then the, the kiss kind of came to mind. So this one is motivated by thievery of Klimt and laziness, because I didn't want to do um, <laughs> fur, but it came out so well. And it's just kind of silly with, like, like, hands where, like, just lots of silly hands, and there's a leg poking out, and... Um, 
I don't know. It just came out so beautifully. I was so proud of it. And then the director of Hustlers, um, she even put it on her Instagram stories with like a little heart emoji. And that's always really nice um, to have someone that's who amazing. you admire like your work back. So yeah, like looking at that now, I'm still very proud of that one. It looks amazing. I like to ask that question because I think most people don't realize is that uh, the internet might like a certain artwork of yours or ours. Um, but your own personal might be very different and you might have a different relationship compared to what everyone else is seeing. So um, I'm going to go back to something you mentioned. So you said you were trying to make an illustration daily or weekly? Um, it used to be daily. So I got out of art school and I studied illustration, but I didn't really learn that much illustration. So not to shit on my art school, but I didn't really learn to draw all that well, which is also part of my own problem. I could have done more when I was in school, but basically I came out, I learned a lot about the process, but not about drawing specifically maybe. So I set up a little goal for myself to do an illustration every day. And I know that the best way to motivate myself uh, was by making a blog. I called them illustration every day. They had to be like something finished. And yeah, I, I pooped out like 300 illustrations in a year like that. And then I was like, okay, this is enough. I need a social life. And then I made it weekly, like 10, 11 years ago. And I haven't broken the streak since. So now if I ever get lazy or tired, I can't not draw because then the stakes are too high for me. Like I don't want to break a 10, 11 year streak. Wow. Okay. Do you recommend this for most people to try to get into the habit of drawing? Maybe it's, I, I think I most recommend figuring out for yourself how you motivate yourself, and if that is shame-based, if that is um, <laughs> reward-based, or like you get somebody in your life to uh, hold you accountable or do this, like whatever works for you, find yeah. that. But yeah, this specifically worked for me, and I have seen in a lot of illustrators um, where they'll talk about they've had such art block for the past X weeks, and I get that, but um, one of the most important things I learned in art school was to you can't have art block. Like, yes, you can, but um, you just start. You just do something, even if you draw something ugly. You just have to make yourself go to work, um, even if you're not motivated or inspired. And sometimes you make horrible work, but then at least you've drawn something and you keep the consistency. And I don't want to drag artists who suffer from major art block, of course. Um, but yeah, I don't. I can't afford it myself, sort of. <laughs> I'm closer to your approach in how we, I do art. Of course, for me, art is not so much of a full-time job, so I don't do it as regularly as I should, but I do force myself to draw, even if I don't feel like I'm inspired to draw anything. I would recommend that for most people, but it can be quite painful. Yeah, I don't want to give a blanket approach, but um, <laughs> yeah, basically whatever you can find to motivate yourself, um, try that. Yeah. Yeah. What a um, stupid answer. <laughs> yeah. Find what trick yeah. works for you and exploit that. Yeah. Okay. I I thought maybe I want to tell you about my favorite from the bunch that you shared with me. I love the one you did of uh, Brooklyn and Evie. Uh, this is the one of the lip sync that they did. But the way you drew it was amazing because they're both doing the headstand in this piece and it's divided in half and then you have Brooklyn in pink on the top and Evie uh, in her colorful jumpsuit in the bottom. Yeah, T tell me a little bit more about this piece because I love it. So for all of All Stars 3 and season 9, I did um, weekly illustrations and I just did it for like a little audience of, you know, two, three hundred followers. And I think around season 11, um, I did a drawing of Evie when she had her orange look with the little half orange on her head. The clown look. That one got picked up by the Instagram algorithm back when they still did that. <laughs> so that kind of blew up. And then a few weeks later, um, Brooke and Evie did their amazing lip sync. And I had mostly just drawn looks, like fashion moments and runway moments. And I felt inspired to try something else. So I figured, oh, why not just do a moment? So I tried to capture the lip sync in one illustration and... Yeah, both headstands. I was like, how do I put those both in one one drawing? And I guess I sort of did it. And that one really blew up. That's like still, I think, the biggest thing I've ever drawn likes and followers and 
engagement wise. The colors are amazing. The composition is amazing. You captured the the moment and you recreated in your own interpretation of what happened at the time. So I think this is such a successful piece. I love this so much. It was great, and this also led me to doing more like moments where it wasn't just runway. I dropped drew Alyssa again a while later, and it was just her um, playing Uncle Dick with this with the little shade umbrella, or. Um, They'll do like a stupid acting challenge and they look like idiots and that'll be more fun to draw than maybe just like a beautiful gown. So I've really enjoyed drawing like stupid drag moments. I thought maybe I should ask you about your Tomb Raider work. So I know you're quite inspired by things outside of Drag Race as well. So what about Tomb Raider that um, connected with you personally? I'm very curious. Uh, it's a part, it's, it's a mix of nostalgia and it's also just the camp. It, it's a diva worship kind of thing. She's kind of a drag queen in the early games, you know, that, that there's some overlap there. The games are still so fun with beautiful music and exploring tombs. And I don't know, of all the things, that one kept sticking with me and it became my whole personality, I guess. It got me very curious because of how specific it is. I mean, the best part of the specificity is there's this um, this tweet that's like, when gays turn 30, they have to pick one of these eight subcategories, and it's like film Twitter gay, um, mental health blogger, fitness gay, like all of these like pretty broad categories, and then one of which is Lara Croft gay. It's like, oh, wow, oh, they came for me with this oh. one. <laughs> uh, so now whenever I want to do like a new style, an easy thing for my brain is like, well, I know how to draw Lara Croft. I don't have to think about what I'm drawing. So then I can focus on the style completely. I understand. It's almost like a draw this in your style challenge for yourself. Yeah. And I yeah. keep drawing it in all my different styles. <laughs> yeah, I think that's yeah, that's great. Anyway, Rick, um, is there anything else that we haven't touched on yet? But one that I was really proud of, uh, one of my favorite moments in illustration, basically, I did a little collaboration with um, Pronably. Um, yeah, I know how to read it. I don't know how to say it. Yes. But yeah, I'll that's a weird up. thing with like internet friends. <laughs> um, <Yes>. Mex. <laughs> we decided to do a little collaboration. Um, and this is when I was stuck in lockdown in Australia. And they have this really cool Cubist illustration style that I've been so inspired. And I thought, what if we do something together? And they agreed. So I got to pick what we drew. And I really wanted to do something with Dita Ritz's legendary. Um, this will be an everlasting love lip sync. And I thought this cubist style would really work for that to like capture all of the motion in one thing. So they made this beautiful illustration. And then I made my version of that with like my colors and like a paper layer style. And we put that online and Dita Ritz saw it and she loved it. And then she commented on it twice. And um, she said she would have loved a big print of that in her house. I was like, Let's do that. So I sent her a giant print and she recently posted that she hung it up in her home, like in her hallway when people come in. So every single person who's in Dita Ritz's home will see this thing that me and a friend drew like in lockdown. So you can, you can be like, you know, stuck in a home, have nothing to do. And then suddenly like a silly little thing you draw is like in this drag queen's home who you admire so deeply. And that's so rewarding to think, They've inspired me so much with their drag and then I can draw something that's now in their life. Like that's wild. That that is the most rewarding part of all of this, I think. That's amazing. We love a good collaboration as well. So um I think that's uh it's great that this piece became what it is. I don't do much collaboration, so maybe that's something I should explore in the future. I recommend it. It can be really, really great. Some of my best, um, or um, I say my, our best work has come from working together with people. That's awesome. Yeah, maybe I should try it out. Uh, I haven't thought about doing it at all. Uh, I'm not so sure why. Um, so thanks for the idea. I'll let you know if, uh, yeah, <laughs> just spread yourself everywhere. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> So we've come to act two of the show, and this is the part of the show where we will dive deeper into a specific theme relating to art and drag. And today, we're talking about paper cutting. Um, I don't want to pigeonhole you into this style, but the one that is most associated to you, I think, is the paper cutting style. And I feel like there's no one else I can talk to about this than you. Uh, Maybe a question about style. How did this come about? Yeah, I I really tried to 
do a bunch of different styles because I don't want to get bored by doing the same thing. Um, but yeah, one that I've really enjoyed is layered paper. And a lot of that comes from there's this incredible artist named Brittany Lee. She does these paper layer illustrations that are just beautiful. Yeah, something about the shadows under each layer for um, by making this paper really got me. Um, love that style. And I figured, oh, I'll try this. And then it stuck. And I just really enjoy doing that. One of the most talented artists I've ever seen. I love her work so much. Maybe a question for you. Um, have you done that in physical medium or you've only developed this style purely digital? Um, I haven't done this specific paper layering in actual paper, but what I have done a lot of um, has been pop-up books. That's also what got me to Australia. Um, I worked on a pop-up book for six months there. So which came first? Um, did a pop-up book project come about because you're so known with this paper style or you became very inclined towards paper material, paper cutting because of the pop-up book project that you're working on? Um, I think the latter. So I, at some point, got kind of tired of doing everything digitally and was looking for some some way to do more physical media stuff. And then I got a pop-up book that really blew me away. I was like, oh, I can try this. So then I tried doing more pop-up things. Like I start with like little cards and then like bigger projects. And then I pitched a bigger pop-up book and that got me to Australia. This is another thing that um, happened in COVID where like, you know, there's nothing else going on, but still your world feels so much bigger because you're working on a thing. Like every week I would be working on a different spread and different techniques Maybe talk me through a process of how you might do a single page of a pop-up book. For example, the the one I showed you of the the coral reef. So you just start with a folded out sheet and you add like one little thing that like folds well and you add another and it can be like different folds. There's a V fold, there's a box fold. Um, and you just start building layers and layers until either you're happy with the composition or until it's just full, like, oh, I can't cram anything more into this or it'll like stick out of the sides. And then when you're happy with the mock-up, then you you take all the bits apart, um, you tear it all up, and then you scan all of the bits in, and then you can do digital illustration over that. And then you print it all out, um, you cut it all out, sometimes by hand, sometimes with a cutting machine, and they should fit in the exact same way as your mock-up, but now there's illustrations on top. That's so beautiful. Um, it just brings the illustration to life or it takes it to another level. I think you get this tangible 3D, 2D sculpture. Yeah, it's so good to have... I mean, showing them an illustration is fun on a phone, but having something like this that they, like you can see the response when like... It, I mean, it is crazy that like all of this shit can fit inside a piece of paper, you know? Like, how did this fit in a book? That makes no sense. Yeah, and it doesn't sound like a straightforward process as well. It, it sounds like there's some unexpected things, is that correct? Yeah, that's part of the iterative process that can sometimes be fun and sometimes be extremely frustrating. I will not be doing this for a couple of years because it fully exhausted me, but now at least I can show people this and I made this and that's fun. Um, is there only one copy of this book or did you manage to get it mass-produced somewhere? I made three. Two here, one of my parents in case my house burns down that I have one left. I could technically make another one, but I will... I don't have it in me to like do all this again. Okay, so for those who are listening, as much as you love the pop-up book, you have to beg Rick to make one. So sound off in and the it'll comment be if you think mega that. expensive, yeah. <laughs> so if you've got and, a couple uh, of hundred yeah. euros to, sp- to spare, you know, we can negotiate. Yeah, I mean, Rick will not wake up from his bed unless it's uh, more than a okay certain amount. Not for this project. This is a fucking nightmare. Like I'm proud of it and happy with it, but dear lord. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I have a nerdy question for you. Do you have a favorite paper? Oh, not really. It's just if the grams are good enough, uh, like there's a specific thickness that works well for um, pop-up books. But what I couldn't find when printing this, there's like a, I don't know, dryness isn't the right word, but like there's a specific vibe to like a, a printed pop-up book where sometimes the paper will like crunch against each other. I make that like, that like pop up crunch, and I can't really. Um, it's an like ASMR a, thing, like a. Yeah, it's yeah. so satisfying, and my my book doesn't have that. Um, 
Oh, I need to look out for that. I have no idea what you're talking about. Yeah, if you open one up and it just kind of like crunches a little bit, like that's what I want for my paper, basically. Okay, so anybody in the comments below, if you can uh, figure out what paper crunches, uh, yeah, nerd out below because we want to... We want to yes, talk to me about paper. I should know. <laughs> I should know more about paper. Honestly, that was just yeah. Uh, highly recommended to just try something tangible every now and then because this is wonderful. It almost feels like you want to take it out of the digital space. I'm not so sure whether that's very conscious for you or is that something that you've always felt missing from digital art. I don't know. It's never been a a conscious choice. I just. Mm-hmm look for styles that I find pretty. I mean, I can pretend to have all these um, like really artistic values attached with the the stained glass art, for example, but a lot of that just is like, it's pretty. And I liked Beauty and the Beast when I grew up. So <laughs> sometimes it's just aesthetic choices, but the paper layer stuff, for example, or this pop-up stuff, some of that really does come from wanting to do something that feels a little bit more tangible. So... What I noticed from your work, because of the paper cutting aspect of it, you almost have to be very conscious about the shape design of your work. Yeah, I also just love clean lines. I've never been much for, yeah, like smudge edges or impressionist styles. Like to look at beautiful, but that's not a thing that I'm good at. And I think also because I started developing the other side more that at some point you get good enough at one thing that the other one is like, feels like a downgrade almost. So yeah, this is very, I love a really straight line through something um, or expressive shapes. Where do you think that comes from? Is it something you've always liked or is it something that you you develop a liking for simplicity over time? I mean, the, the truly honest answer is probably, it's just what I got better at. So it feels easier. <laughs> like I've tried other styles and like like smudgy or like realistic backgrounds and it just never really looks all that good. And then if I do like a, a very clean, expressive shape with a gradient in there, like that looks good. And that is more satisfying. Like, oh, this works and this looks nice. I'll keep doing this. So that's what I developed. So I think it might have been, you know, the branching path when I started out had like both options. But this one was a little easier and like that looked better at the time. So that's the one I fully went into, if that makes sense. I always find it harder to keep things simple and clear and clean. Because you have to be so conscious about every shape, every placement, every look, and you almost have to read very fast without the dependence on an outline or something like that. Is that something that's hard for you or you feel like it's very natural? No, that really has developed over the last decade where I, I knew the shapes that I liked, that I found beautiful, but then I had to lock into them first. And now I finally got a grasp on like, oh, I'm doing it on purpose. Like I'm, I can replicate this instead of just locking into it. Um, so yeah, it, just, it is years and years of honing that skill. To me, from my side of things, I feel like you have such a good grasp or clarity on putting things together or shape design. Thank you. I'm so jealous because... I don't know whether you can tell my lines are a little bit messy, my artwork is a little bit grungy, and uh, I think it's just to use to hide our insecurities. I admire so much about um, your work or oh. that approach in your work. Thank you. Um, yeah. I mean, the downside is that what I'm missing that you would have is like more of a, a loose, expressive art style sometimes where um, I will often find myself like, boxing things in and making them more and more rigid and like I'll look at the sketch I'm like oh there's like so much life in this and then the final product gets kind of like sterile so you know you win some you lose some so on the scale one to ten how much are you like your artwork are you clean in a box or are you a little bit expressive on the outside I think it is very much an expression of me where I also remember in art school that people were like expressing their darkness through their art. And I never felt a pull towards that. And I had a little bit of a struggle with like, oh, is my art not personal? And then I realized, no, I just like colorful nonsense. Um, And that is my artwork. Like it's colorful and silly and like simple. Maybe I'm simple. That's not the right word to use. But yeah, colorful nonsense is how I would describe my work. And that's also how you would probably describe my personality. So no nonsense art. No, no, no. Full nonsense art. Like, yeah, like I think looking at um, the stuff I sent you, 
like the colors and the vibe of that. Like, yeah, that's I'm I'm close to a nine or a ten. Like, that's just who I am. That's how I express myself. Like, Laura Croft, gay and bright colors. Like, that's kind of all there is. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's that's good. But I can't help to notice looking at your apartment. Is it fair to say that you like the the whole minimalist style vibe as well? Sort of. Um, I mean, I want to put something on that wall here, and I've just <laughs> been unable to find something to put on there. So maybe that's perfectionism. I wanted to put a lot of <laughs> records on there, but you can see that all the sunlight hits that wall, so they would like bleach. I at one point realized, like you know, everybody's home has a vibe, and some people's homes are like very warm or cozy or messy. And I realized at one point, I was like, oh, this is giving like decent Airbnb. <laughs> so, I guess that's, <laughs> no, that's my vibe. My vibe is it's clean on what you can see, but it's messy on the other side. So it's chaos somewhere outside. <laughs> There's this hidden chaos under the surface. Yeah, hidden hidden chaos. And that's a 100% reflection of my, uh, my personality. <laughs> I guess if I look around, you can't see it right now, but I've got a bunch of like CDs and Blu-rays um, and vinyl records. So I guess my personality also is like crotchety old man who hangs on to physical media. I'm not sure <laughs> what that says about me, but love a Blu-ray. Okay. Yeah, we can update your profile bio description later. <laughs> okay. Uh, anyway, back to the topic. Say a digital artist like myself, if I want to dabble into style similar to yours, what do you think it's different in terms of what I have to think about? Is there a difference? Oh, that's tough. Um, mm. Yeah, I don't know how I think when I draw, I guess. Like at some point, I just... It becomes almost instinctual. Um, if I look at like... You've uploaded some illustrations where you do the whole drawing process. And I think the way we start at least is very similar. Like the way you block things out and sketch... And then I guess the next step in your case is like a more expressive um, way of drawing and developing it. And I guess if you would go for more for minimalism, you'll have to edit yourself. Like you're drawing hair and you're making it like a beautiful, fluffy, realistic shape. But you could be like, where can I make things like a block or a circle or a, or a diagonal um, yeah, you almost have to take yourself away from the reference sometimes and decide, I yeah, have to reduce take those this liberties. down to... Uh, yeah, take it far enough that it's abstract enough to be recognizable. And uh, Yeah, I think that's... After you're done with the first sketch, take a little moment to look back, squint, and be like, okay, what are the main shapes and can I exploit those? Um, but I don't also yeah, do that, always do that either. I think what most people underestimate is how much editing that you have to do. So the end piece might not look like there's a lot of lines on the paper, but there's so much that's removed in the process. Which also yeah. is um, part of why I enjoy uploading like processes. Like whenever I do an illustration, I update my stories with um, first sketch, second sketch, color, um, shadow layer, whatever, like um, in exactly the same framing so you can just tap and see the before and after and then also I like showing people like see how much work is in this that looks very simple um, I've been slaving over this and the one thing that I'm quite jealous that you do quite well is your ability to be able to draw just with two colors or very very limited palette and I think that's something maybe I should want to try to explore more but I think there was a piece that you did of Jimbo the black and white one that I love mm -hmm. so much um, because it's just black shapes which i thought was quite successful thank you i need to do that more because whenever i do it comes out so well and people love it i have one of um Gottmik, um where she's holding the little like um hellraiser box that also is just black and white i don't do that enough also yeah. fun little um side story thing the box she's holding the real one in that um that was the finale of season 13 maybe yeah, 13. Um, and she walked out in this like spiky head um, Hellraiser S&M dream. Um, and the box she's holding is like a custom Hellraiser adjacent box with like got make artwork on all the sides. And one of them, my little illustration was part of it, sort of like that. It's kind of great. I can have a story that's related. So when season 12 was airing, um, I drew RuPaul... Um, in the reunion episode where she was wearing the um the face the luchador the mask face, yeah, yeah. I, I drew like a luchador poster uh, like well vaguely inspired by that because i thought it was just such a funny look 
And the next day I woke up with a message from World of Wonder being like, hey, can we use this as single artwork? So um, they paid me and they got the illustration. And now if you listen to Bring Back My Girls, um, that's my illustration on the single cover, just on Spotify. And um, if you like use it on Instagram and on iTunes, that's just my drawing as like an official RuPaul single cover. That one of those moments that, you know, your life feels so small and you're just stuck in a room, but like, look at the weird reach you can have and like the people you can talk to because you drew something stupid. Like, yeah, that's the best part I of these illustrations. That. I find that the drag race fan artists have some kind of influence in the whole drag universe as well. Except at the same time, I feel like we are this mysterious being just producing artwork in the shadows. And I thought, yeah, it's so sad that nobody knows the people behind these artworks. I mean, I'm very happy with the the little interactions I've had so far where like <laughs> uh, Raja, I've drawn her a lot and... At one point, she just started recognizing me. We're just like, another one? Like, she she knew that I was that idiot who kept drawing her. And that feels really nice. That like, I mean, I would do it in a vacuum, but knowing the person that inspires you knows your work is really, really fun. What they should do, though, is like, if they run out of people for makeover episodes, do a fan art episode, you know? Like, get us on there. <laughs> Put us in drag. I mentioned this to someone the other day, so hopefully... We'll let's put that out in the universe. Let's manifest, let's manifest this. Hello. The and then I'll see you on that episode and I won't be invited <laughs> and we'll have like a bitter feud like that. That's the plan. Uh, yeah. No, they'll find the most random other artists and then we'll be there so bitter sitting at home. We're like, we came up with this idea first. Must be nice. <laughs> yeah, no, I think Chat Cell came up with that first. Um, he's the true oh, OG. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. I started digital art 100% because I was following Chetzel's art. The minimalism and the expression and the shapes, like, oh, what a king. The work. Yes. Legendary. So yes, make of that episode. Yes, that would be I'll great. Say. Like, I don't have any um, drag fan artist feuds, but I'm happy to start some. <laughs> if. <laughs> okay, yeah, let's start some gossip. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I wish there was more drama like this, uh, but no, it's, it's very kumbaya. Um, it's positive and lovely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> In Act 3, I'll just ask you some random questions. Are you ready? Yes. Okay. Rapid fire. Um, okay, yeah. What are you usually doing when you're not drawing? Oh, it's really condensed to mostly drawing. Like, you have all these hobbies, and then slowly, like, your work becomes drawing. And then when you're home, you're drawing. And then, like, you've got a really small little life. Um, so I'm often here at my desk drawing. Um, I'll be watching camp horror movies with my friends, um, dancing taking weird little trips. I went to Oslo last weekend to see Dagny live, this incredible pop artist. Um, so you'll find me at concerts, dancing, still drawing, um, sometimes video games, watching movies with friends, just all the basic hobbies, basically. Um, you know, you all become the same person after a while. You brush off dancing like it's something normal that everybody does, so... <laughs> We're humans, we dance, you know. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, no, that's awesome. Okay, one more question for you. Uh, is that okay? I'm happy to answer okay. whatever. Are you a good cook? Um, I think so. I don't really have takeout budget, so I have to just make my own dinner every day. And at some point, you just have to get good at that. What's your go-to? Ooh, um, I love making like a goopy carbonara. Like I'm just a human sim, I guess. I just, whenever I run out of inspiration, I'm like, well, it's pasta day again. Uh, what's your favorite painting of all time? Ooh, um, the, the Swing, maybe, by um, Fragonard. It's the Rococo painting of the, the girl in pink swinging. Yeah, just the, the way that forest, like, um, surrounds her and... Her vibe, like, oops, my shoe. Like, all of it is so beautiful. I love that one. No, that's a beautiful painting. Yeah, I agree. Sorry, I have to ask you that because I just recently went to Amsterdam and there's so much art around. How do you not be inspired living in such a beautiful city? So anyway, Rick, thank you so much again for making time to talk to me. Um, not many people are so generous with their 
Saturday mornings. So I really, I mean, really appreciate it. All you asked of me is to talk about myself and my illustrations. Like, I can do this for hours. This is great. We'll have a, a follow up episode, part two. So if you guys want、oh, to see、yes. part two, <laughs> where we just. Go through my entire like、um, back catalog of like my week illustrations, and just I talk about each one for twenty minutes.、Mm, can't wait! That's gonna be、yeah. great. Yeah, and then we'll do it in ASMR style. Oh, a seven-hour episode、yeah. of me going like, <laughs> when I drew this one, I had a mild fever. It was a really bad time. But I still love the colors. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll get like. Oh, can't wait for that! Yeah, that'll be great navel gazing. Seven hour episode. Okay, okay. Trademark that that、uh, idea. No one touches it. We'll film that soon. Okay. Nobody will want to touch <laughs> it. Do not worry. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all for listening to Canvases and Queens.、Uh, please subscribe and never miss another episode. Please sound off in the comments and tell us who you want to see. You want to see Rick again, or、uh, what other topics you want us to discuss on this channel in the future? Like this video if you've enjoyed any part of this conversation. Share this with a friend as well. You can follow us at Canvases X Queens on Instagram.、Um, and where can people find you, Rick?、Um, I'm at Rick Draws Things. Oh, let me pop that K、uh, with no C, just R I K Draws Things on most media. Um, if you didn't like this episode, keep it to yourself. Don't share it. Yeah, no. Keep、one. keep the comments nice. <laughs> It's worse on Reddit, guys. Reddit is a very toxic place to post your work.、Um, that's、oh. for me. I find Reddit to be very toxic. Oh no, because people have been really nice to me on Reddit. Like I got lucky. What you guys are doing to me, guys? <laughs> <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Join me again next episode, and until then, keep it artsy and stay artsy. Bye. Oh, that's so good. It's hard enough to have to draw an artwork. Then you have to dance with it. No, no way. Reels, get it together. <laughs> <sighs>